We're in New Milton in Hampshire today and we come to the Garden of Les Kid to have a little chat with Gary Furin about long distance racing pigeons. These two lads are two of our leading long distance racers in the Hampshire area. This is Les Kid and Gary Furin. Good morning lads. Morning Keith. Morning, Keith. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice for nice weather mate, apart from today, ain't been too good is it? <laughs> they were fighting against the rain. Yeah. So you both like long distance. Les, what, what's the attraction of long distance racing for you? I think the thrill of seeing a pigeon land on that trap ball, you know it's done 500 miles. Yeah. I think it's absolutely out of this world. And once you've done it, you need you want to get back there. It's like a drug really. Yeah. You know, it's... Um, yeah. Getting a day pigeon out of somewhere like Pile or something like that, it's oh, like yeah. a buzz, isn't it? Yeah. How about you, Gary? What's your attraction to it? Well, similar. I feel exactly the same. Um, I was lucky enough a few years back to get one on a day, and it was a lovely feeling. Yeah. Dropped at 20, 27 minutes past nine at night. And um, and obviously this season, I've had first, first section third open from Pogue, but it was on a day race. Yeah. But they put a good day's work in. Yeah. The thing is, it was such an odd race. I mean, as time. you know, I've, I've convoyed to post six times and tubs twice. You get that northern element in the wind, it's a bit unlikely, you know, they've got to be really good pigeons to do it on a day, ain't they? Oh, absolutely. And sometimes it's impossible, mate, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I always feel that if they don't come on a day and you get them next morning, you know them pigeons have put a day's work in. Yeah. And they're the sort of pigeons that you can breed out of and and carry on with the family, like you know? Yeah, they you are a type, them. aren't they? Oh, they you are, trust are, them, yeah. yeah. They're definitely a tight. Some people say you could win in races with short distance pigeons, but there is a short and a long distance, isn't there? Yeah, I think so. I, th I think the distance pigeons are, are more finer boned and a smaller type of pigeon yeah. than, than the sprinters are, you yeah. know? Yeah, they're more buoyant, aren't they? They're more heavy, aren't they, than sprint pigeons? Oh, yeah. You've only got to look at the athletes that run 100 metres, ask them to do 5,000, and you look at Mo Farah and, and look at um, Seb Cohen and all them, compared with a sprinter. Yeah. A sprinter you could put in a boxing ring as a heavyweight champion, really. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's the same with pigeons. Yeah, Gary, was your dad into long distance then? Did you learn it off him? No, he, my dad wasn't. He was more, he loved the sprint scene. He just started pigeon racing. Train, train hard and keep the pigeons a bit tight and, you know. Yeah. Mind, it was different days then, Keith. There wasn't so much widowed around in the early 70s. No. It was just beginning to get going, I think. Yeah. People were starting to take it up. So, my dad used to train hard. You know, and, and that's how he got the pigeons right. But um, yeah. I, I wasn't. I was more interested. When we won Birds Rack in '77 yeah. in the Ealing Ealing HS. There was only three in a day. We were first and second, and George Burgess had one. Um, so you know, that that thrilled me. That, the feeling that it was a North East wind, tough race, thousand yards a minute. Yeah. And, and that ignited me. You know, and I thought this is what I want to be doing. Yeah. And I've just always wanted to, when I was North Road, you know, Thurzo, Lyric, always the races I tried to do well out. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I asked the pigeons to do it and they did respond, you know. Yeah. So I, th I think there's a type of pigeon that will have it. Yeah. If, if you're lucky enough to get the bloodlines. Yeah. You're both natural flyers. Les, what do you think about Woodward for long distance then? No, <coughs> well, they're doing it now, Keith, aren't they? But I remember when they first started Woodward, they wouldn't even put them across the water. They used yeah. to just keep them inland yeah. and fly up to about Exeter, but they wouldn't put pigeons across the channel, and then they started to put them across the channel. Yeah. And then I think that Woodward now has been overtaken by a roundabout, and where they never used to fly their ends, they rely more on their ends now at distance than now on the Woodward cocks. Yeah. You know, and. Yeah. Um, Although there are plenty of good wood flies around who do the distance, look at Brian Denny. Yeah, yeah, yeah Brian, I mean, yeah. Top man, isn't he? You know, you can't, you can't knock it. I mean, they get them. But, yeah. um, but, but it's not just about winning, is it? It's about enjoying your pigeons, which I is what so. I do. Yeah, yeah. You know, I enjoy my pigeons. It ain't about winning. Yeah. If I have a result, fair enough. Yeah, I think we're widowed for long distance. It's more a soft widowed, isn't it? You know, it ain't like... They don't, they don't break down or that sort of thing. I mean, it's more of a soft widow. Like I'm intrigued Brian, by yeah. it because it, it, it's incredible they can do it. Because yeah. what you imagine a widowed cop yeah. goes through yeah. for a season. So there has to be a different element to it, yeah. how, they, how they race these people. Yeah, it's definitely soft. And I say Brian's record speaks for itself. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. There ain't many better, maybe better than Brian Denny. Let's talk a little bit about feeding for long distance. How do you boys feed? How do you do feed Les? Well, I've been a bean feed all my life. Yeah. Even when I was young, I used to get the horse beans off the farm. Yeah. 
and I always used to feed them through an opera in front of them all the time. And uh, and what I do now is they're still fed through an oppo all the year round, and I give them a, a tippet, a condition seed. Yeah. Just if, whatever they're not getting out of them beans, it'll be in that condition seed. Yeah. And that's the way that yeah. I do it. How about training your birds? Well, <clears throat> I used to train keep up until I got hit by the orcs, and now I don't train. But when I do, if I, I have to train the young ones to learn them the basket, so yeah. I only go three miles. And they don't know whether I've gone 50 miles or three miles. Yeah. The same exercise and routine is the same yeah. if you was going a long way. Yeah. You're a bean feeder too then, Gary? Absolutely. The others will they graze whenever they want. Yeah. Um, but I do, as Les does, use a little bit of trapping seed and I mix a little bit of armor form with it. Yeah. Um, and they're just trapped when I let, let them get them in from, from flying out. Um, I've trained similar to Les. Yeah. You know, he's right what he's saying. It's a waste of time going too far down the coast because yeah. there's more chance of peregrines taking them. Yeah. I've had them come home, you know, lumps taken out of them, damaged flights, tails missing. It's just it's just a nightmare. Yeah. And those that do come home in the evening, they've just gone down getting away from the orcs. So what's the point? It's, yeah. it's not teaching or nothing, is no. it? So you're better off getting them exercising around home, teach them what the basket is, jump into the races and use the short classic races to get them right. And hopefully, it, well, it happened for me this year, but it doesn't always, obviously. Nah, but I enjoy my pigeons all the time around the garden. Yeah. That's the key to it. Yeah, and as I say, I do, I do feed peanuts towards the, towards the long distance races. Yeah. I, not a lot, just a few. I just give them a few, you know, just a little treat. Yeah, that's great, mate. How long have you been in the sport then, Les? Well, let's see. Um, I started when I was about nine, I suppose. Yeah. But on my estate where I lived, everybody had pigeons. It was a boys. Instead of having mobile phones today, they all had pigeons. Yeah. And uh, I started off when I was nine. All my mates had pigeons. Then I went in the army and come out. So, <laughs> answer your question, Keith, I suppose, is about 71 years. Oh, Christ, mate. See a few changes in this. Oh, not many. I mean, when, when I, I remember when I joined the Ealing, they, they used to set about 60, 70 clocks. And they was and they was all two lays, you know. Yeah. And some of the great flies in them days, Tubby Tate and Freddie Mills and uh, Fred Perkis and Arthur White. And another great distance fly who was in the National was Arthur Murray. Yeah. Um, and he had, a, he had a great pigeon, 116, always remember it. It was 5th Open Nance and 13th Open Poe when Vic Robinson won it and there was only 13 home on the day then. Yeah. And Peter Titmus, he was uh, 12th Open. And they're the sort of days that you don't forget in Pigeon no, Race. That's fantastic. You know, so, um, how about you, Gary? How long have you been in the sport? Oh, blimey, Keith. Knocking on 50 years, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I was about 11 or 12. So getting on, getting on 50 years, yeah. and the good old, I, I'm, well the funny thing is, Les was one of the first fanciers I actually met yeah. as a kid. I went and knocked on his front door, and he sent me to see Ernie Close. And yeah. um, old Ernie, what a lovely old fellow he was, very helpful, give you advice, yeah. help you down a club, you know, used to go to the local club, obviously when I was a kid that club was packed. Used to be about 50 members in that healing club, yeah. and I was just a little nipper, and it was a bit daunting for me, but. I was made welcome, I loved the club. It, yeah, was, a, yeah. it was a really good club. And um, early, early close, he was a similar bloke, as you would know, Keith, to Dickie Brooker. Yeah. He knew every rule in the book. Yeah. Old Beatty Pen. Beat Pen, no, yeah. Uh, my auntie Beat. Well, I think she was one of the best, if not the best secretary ever. Yeah. She, ran, she ran the club, the Federation Combine. Although, Claire Norman's got to be up there. Yeah. Well, to me, in my opinion, you know, no disrespect to anybody, Claire Norman's the best pigeon yeah. secretary I've ever met, I tell her that as well. Get a Christmas wow. car for us every year. Yeah, she's, she's brilliant. But yeah. Beatty Penn, I loved her, she's my auntie, you yeah. know, we, um, she's wonderful, wonderful. Well, I grew up with Beatty Penn, you know, and me and my brother was always around there with yeah. Ernie and that, you know. Yeah. And uh, they were so dedicated to the administration yeah. side of the sport, yeah. it was unbelievable. 
Yeah, people don't appreciate that, I don't think, no. half this time. No. And of course, you're both down now living in Hampshire. Yeah, both yeah. moved down here. Country bumpkins. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, the middle sex mafia. <coughs> but, carrot, carrot munchies now. Uh, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, Keith, it's very hard to, uh, to fly pins on the south coast. About people say yeah. you've moved halfway to the race point. If, the, the, if you don't get a direct hit, you, you've had it. Yeah. Know, they do a dog leg. Yeah. And then even if you get a direct hit, there only wants to be another pigeon with it. Yeah. And you give away overfly. Yeah. It's very hard, you know. Yeah. But I'm not moaning, I wouldn't change it. No. I wouldn't change no. it. No. Anyway, when we finish, let's just go along the road here. I thank that bloke very much for his chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you two boys, it's been lovely meeting you again today. And all the very best for the rest of the 2017 season. Thanks, lads. Right. Thanks, Keith. It's Thanks very much, Keith. Really it's good to see you, mate. It's been a pleasure. Hope you enjoy the rest of your holiday. You've come to the best bit of the world.